and opposites. So what is singing the song? Singing the song? Yes, uh, expand on that a little bit. Uh, what we need to do... It's like a choir. When you take a person into a choir and you say to them, we want you to sing in harmony with the rest of the choir members. We want you to not allow your voice to be out of harmony with any of the tones that are produced by this choir. And the first day you're there, it's difficult because you have to find your way into harmony. And so for me to be able to tell you an instant answer of how to do it would be taking away something from you which you need to work for and find for yourself to become a member of the choir. And so you need to work at singing the harmony through processes of meditation, submission, through work, to become part of the choir, to become part of creation's harmony, rather than in rebellion to it. And the rebellion to it is self-identification with the I, or the egoism of oneself, that you're the center of the universe, when all you are is a part of the choir of creation. So that would mean, uh, in more simpler terms, as if the choir were singing one type of song and one walks in the room and starts singing their own song, that would be the same thing as what you're saying. Exactly. You'd be singing out of tune with the choir. Right. And that's what happens in our society today is everybody singing their own song rather than singing together with nature. Yes? Going back to the Big Bang, uh, is the Big Bang a result of one point C forming a bond or more than one point C? There's an infinite number of Big Bangs in a, in a finite moment. And the universe that we look at is a, a finite universe to the extent that the universes that exist are infinite. This universe we can say that we're involved in is 365, here designed in the red between 233 and 377. And it's one finite universe. We being so minute, looking out into it, believe that there could be nothing larger or grander than this one universe. But all it is is one universe in one state of time, in a angstrom of a second, a thousandth of a second. There could be another universe corresponding next to it, larger or as large as the universe we're in. In the same place? In the same place because of the distortion in time. A shift in time. What do you mean by in the same place? It maintains the same space. As we do? Yeah, because see where you're laying right now? Yeah. You can get up and I can go lay there. Who's maintaining the space? You were maintaining the space a minute ago. The minute later, I'm maintaining the space. So if a microsecond takes place, in differences between us maintaining the same place, we can both occupy the same space. It's just a different dimension then? A different dimension because of a time shift. So is that to say that something could be right here if I could have my hand in it? Exactly. You can't, you, because you're in a different state of time than it. So there could be another universe happening there in is. the same place in the same time? There is. Would you say that there are infinite numbers of universes happening? Or? Yes, there are infinite number of universes happening. In the same space? In the same space. Because there is no such thing as space. It's and an illusion. No, no such thing It's as created time. by a variation between time and speed. Space is. So that's why we don't run into what we can't see? Sometimes we do run into what we can't see. <laughs> but 
it's not in your matter or your relativity isn't in its relativity. Now, something to explain here, the minus above the 8 and the plus above the 13 doesn't mean that the 21 is a bad number and the 34 is a good number or the 55 is a bad number because it's a minus number. What this represents is a polarity between the harmonic dimensions. And we would call these eternities here harmonic dimensions. And what we do is we evolve down this cylinder of evolutionary absolute time tell we're about at 365 and we're in polarity we're between 233 and 377 a plus and a minus which causes uh, an opposites in things it causes sexuality like when we look at things in their very beginning stage like atoms they evolve in as asexual and the things that seem to evolve out of the universe become asexual, but in the middle of the two harmonic dimensions, all of the eternities in between there are in a state of polarity or in sexuality or in opposites, light and dark, male and female, high and low, backwards and forwards. On the harmonic dimensions, which would be sort of, if you showed them properly, they would be collapsed to the point C. There is no polarity. We evolved to these points to a harmonic state where we rest in sort of an absolute for a period of time and then we evolve out of that absolute back into another eternity of polarity. And this brings up the lecture on mummification. For mummification to take place and the reason that it has to take place for the allowing of the expansion of the cylinder of evolutionary absolute time we have to maintain every eternity in its integrity. It has to be fulfilled with its constituent matter and energy. And what causes us to evolve on is when we become fulfilled with singing Mary Had a Little Lamb. We sing it for eternities. We go on to a new song, like the engrams within the atom. When it becomes fulfilled with its path from its destination back to its origination, it drops back to this line and goes on. But it has to duplicate itself before it can go on. Now, during the mummification process, a doubling of the identity or the energy source within one's soul takes place. And that is mummified and preserved, let us just say, within this state or this eternity to fulfill it. And then we, are, we evolve on to a new state within evolution, yes. What is the catalyst for that process? Fulfillment, to the extent that we become bored with the mundaneness of being a human. Nature automatically does it. It's like we allow the barriers to be taken away from our consciousness, the things that prevent us from evolving on. And when they're taken away because we become bored with where we're at, we remove those and we see anew. So there isn't something that is induced as a catalyst that's nature's own catalyst that causes that effect? Yeah, it is nature's own catalyst. It's the fulfillment of where we're at. That's natural. For example, when you were a young boy, you probably played with models. And you played with models and models and models until you became fulfilled with it, right? and your barrel filled full of water and it overflowed into something new. It's natural. Nature takes care of it automatically. Now some people take a long time to get fulfilled and others evolve faster than others. Some are very slow and some are very rapid. And the more we learn to sing the song, the more a barrel becomes fulfilled. It's like the more models you build, the fuller your model building barrel becomes. 